Hello everyone. I'm back to do a little bit more hand splaining, but this time it's special. We're going to do a little bit of science. Today we're testing out the scale trick. By scale, I'm talking about a machinist ruler like this. Now you can use this to find the rough center of a piece of round stock, either in a mill vise or drill press vise, or actually setting your center height on the lathe. Let me show you how it works. If you bring your tool down against the scale and you're on center, the scale should be nice and flat. If you're off to one side or the other, it will angle upwards or downwards depending on which way you're going. Now this is a fantastic way to get roughly in the middle in certain circumstances. I use this a lot for relatively low precision holes, things like cross holes for cotter pins, uh, again the center height on the lathe, and any kind of work in a drill press where you have to drill through a piece of round stock. This gets you way closer than just eyeballing and saying, okay, that's about center. When I'm doing the scale trick, I prefer to use one of the stiff machinist scales like this. It's a little bit thicker rather than the thin flexible ones like this. I do like the flexible ones for general measurements, but they have a tendency to be bent for some reason. So that can fool your eyeball when you're trying to line up the part. One last thing I want to mention before we get into testing is that I do not use this trick with carbide tooling. Carbide is very brittle, so if you press it down against the scale, it has a tendency to chip. That goes the same for the lathe as well. If you're pressing a carbide insert against the scale, you might end up chipping that insert. Here's my methodology for testing this out. The first thing I'm going to do is find the actual center of this bar with an edge finder, just like I normally would. I'll find it here, zero it, find it over there, and then split the difference, and that should be dead center. I'll have that zeroed out in the digital readout, and then I will compare each of my scale tests to that measurement. That way, it'll be very easy to see how far off I am on each one. This is where I found the edge on the second side of my part. So all I need to do is hit Y half and then move this into zero and I'll be right in the middle of my part. Now that I have the center found on the part and that's marked as zero in the digital readout, I'm going to put the scale on here and test it 10 different times. Each time I'll move the y-axis over some random amount, just turn the handle a little bit, and then I'm going to see how close I can get to actually centered. I won't look at the digital readout until I think that it's actually centered, and then I'll look up there and see how far off I am and notate it on this little chart that I wrote on my script. Here's attempt number one. When you do this, you get down eye level with the scale and then just move it until it looks right. I'm gonna try not to block the camera here. That looks pretty good to me. Let's check the digital readout. And I'm off by five thousandths. All right, let's see if we can do better than that. All right, let's see where we are there. Ooh, I got a lot closer there. I'm off by one and a half thousandths. All right, we'll call it there. Whew, that one sucked. Off by nine thousandths right there. Nine and a half, actually. So, real fast, what I'm doing is I'm looking at the gap between the two vice jaws and the scale. I can also sight down the part and kind of try to line it up there, but that's not as effective. Uh, you have a tendency to go a little too far one way just because of the perspective. So let's see where I am there. Got another five thousandths on that one. All 
All right, let's see. Almost seven thousandths, six and eight tenths. I'm going to try to get a little bit more of a head-on view on this one. But the camera's in the way and I really don't want my head in frame. That looks pretty good. Ooh, no it doesn't. That one's off by eleven thousandths. So far this trick is not shaping up to be very accurate. Here's attempt number seven. Okay, not bad. I'm within three thousandths. You can see how quick it is to actually get it in the realm of flatness. That one's off by four thousandths. Two more to go. Like I said, for quick and dirty stuff, this is really fantastic. Things like, uh, like cotter pin holes really don't need to be perfectly on center. It's not like they're locating anything. Uh, let's try that. That's almost seven thousandths, six and six tenths. And last try. Again, six thousandths. Just for my own edification, I'm going to do 10 more off camera. I'm going to move the camera out of the way and put my head where it is, because that's where I really want it to be. Uh, and I just want to see if I can get better than what I'm getting right here. We'll be right back. And we're back. To give a recap, the readings for on camera were 0 0.005, 0 0.0015, 0 0.095, 0 0.005, 0 0.0068, 0 0.0011, 0 0.0029, 0 0.0064, 0 0.0066, and 0 0.006. I averaged that out, and that comes to an average deviation of 0 0.00583. For the off camera, I got 0 0.0029 for the first one, 0 0.0019, starting out real strong, and then I got cocky. The next ones were 0 0.0045, 0 0.0076, 0 0.0029, not too bad, and then a really bad run. 0 0.0072, 0 0.0098, 0 0.0068, 0 0.0010, 0 .010, and I finished strong with a 0 0.0039. The average for the off-camera is 0 0.00575, as opposed to 0 0.00583. That's a pretty negligible difference, so I don't think having the camera in the way really affected my performance at all. I highly recommend everyone go out to their shop and repeat this experiment. It really doesn't take very long to set up at all, and I'd love to see your averages posted down in the comments below. Plus, then you get to see if you can beat me. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. Please consider hitting like and subscribe down below. And if you feel like supporting the channel, check out my Patreon page. The link's down in the description. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.